9597 or 5498. Alternatively, you can also send us an email, and that is at rights and records at sabc.co.za. South Africa's cherished ideals of peace, tolerance and respect for human rights took a knock in recent weeks. This as many here and beyond our borders witnessed with horror renewed attacks on foreign nationals, which has attracted wide condemnation. But many believe we can take lessons from the path traveled towards peace and reconciliation. And the spirit of being an African is captured in the following speech by former President Tabombeki. Have a look at this. I am an African. I owe my being to the hills and the valleys, the mountains and the glades, the rivers, the deserts, the trees, the flowers, the seas, and the ever-changing seasons that define the face of our native land. My body has frozen in our frosts and in our latter-day snows. It has thawed in the warmth of our sunshine and melted in the heat of the midday sun. The crack and the rumble of the summer thunders, lashed by startling lightning, have been a cause both of trembling and of hope. The fragrances of nature have been as pleasant to us as the sight of the wild blooms of the citizens of the felt. The dramatic shapes of the dragon's back, the soil-colored waters of the Likwa, Ikreli, Notugel, and the sands of the Kalahati have all been panels of the set on the natural stage on which we act out the foolish deeds of the theater of the day. At times, and in fear, I have wondered whether I should concede equal citizenship of our country to the leopard and the lion, the elephant and the springbok, the hyena, the black mamba, and the pestilential mosquito. A human presence among all of these, a feature on the face of our native land just defined, I know that none dare challenge me when I say I am an African. Mm. And now to talk to us about the building blocks of South Africa's democracy, constitutional values, and the commitment to the principles of human rights, let's welcome Honorable Deputy Minister Professor Tlingwem Kize from the Department of Telecommunications and Postal Services. We're also joined by Mr. Dewa Mavinga, Sa Senior Southern Sun, Southern Africa, rather, Researcher in Africa Division and Human Rights Watch. At our next uh, studios, we're also joined by Father Smagali Somkajwa, Chairman of the Moral Regeneration Movement. And from our Cape Town studio, we're also uh, welcome Mr. Stanley Hankeman, uh, head of Institute of the Justice and Reconciliation Programs. He's actually head of programs uh, for the Building an Inc Inclusive Society. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Perhaps, Deputy Minister, let's start our discussion with you. A very profound speech there by former President Tabondeki. Uh, what can we learn as South Africans? I am an African. What does it mean to be an African? I think it's a very powerful message that was read was was given by the former president in parliament yes and if you look at where we were maybe we're just two years after democracy so he gave a historical perspective of where we come from which is critical mm -hmm. remember even constitutions when the constitution is um, introduced to the country it usually talks to your own struggles mm -hmm. historical struggles so for us being an African, we can look at it from different perspective. Basically, it's really about our own history, our identity, our experiences, our struggles against mm -hmm. colonialism and other social ills like genocides, apartheid, and so on, mm -hmm. and domination, abuse of human rights. A and so we define ourselves as people who are creating a new social order yes. based on human dignity, mm -hmm. the culture of human rights, peace, 
and reconciliation, of All course. Right. Just talking about the new society uh, that we are trying to uh, create, uh, putting emphasis on peace and reconciliation also, uh, do you think that perhaps as South Africans who have really grasped uh, the idea or the true definition of being an African, uh, putting in light uh, definitely what's been happening on the news for the past three weeks? Yeah, you know, we have about 55 million South Africans mm -hmm. who are struggling on a daily basis to adhere to the values and principles of the Constitution. Even under extremely difficult circumstances, uh, service delivery challenges, mm -hmm. like those who do not have access to quality education, access to health, land issues, and so on. And they remain true in defense mm -hmm. of those values, the history that the former president spoke about, mm -hmm. of being an African, Ubuntu, and so on. But of course, with the recent events, you could see the power of um, the few who, 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 d who decided not to adhere to mm -hmm. any of those traditions, the values, the rule of law, who, de who decided to act as they see it fit. Mm -hmm. But I will be cautious even to define that as xenophobic. If you take the famous picture now of a man wielding a knife like this, I've been saying, did he go to buy it because he wanted to attack the, Zim, the, the Mozambican? Mm -hmm. And I don't think so. That man must have been terrorizing people in the community for mm -hmm. some time. It's in the behavior. Yeah, it's a criminal act. All right. Uh, Mr. Dewa, let's come to you. Uh, definitely you are the senior South Africa, um, Southern Africa researcher in the African um, Division of Human Rights and Watch. Uh, just talk about human rights and especially in light of uh, what's been happening, the xenophobic or Afrophobic, def uh, depending on how people want to uh, view it. Uh, do you think, what building blocks basically do you think we can take from the sentiments of being in Africa? Well, I, th I think that's uh, a very powerful speech by former President Abombeki, mm -hmm. uh, which uh, acknowledges that I am an African and there are no borders on, or boundaries. So that value which says we are together Africans is quite important for us to grasp if we are to deal with uh, xenophobic violence. But what is uh, more important is, are the other values that the minister has spoken to, uh, including the values of Ubuntu, which actually is uh, an embodiment of what South Africans uh, believe and stand for. So that is something that really needs to be highlighted. Mm -hmm. But this is uh, supposed to be in a context and the context here is to look at the broader challenges that are happening in so South Africa including um, uh, the pressure on South Africa, mm -hmm. the economic resources issues. Um, all these things must be addressed in order to ensure that there is a fulfillment of the basic rights that are in the Constitution. Otherwise, if the Constitution is viewed in a vacuum, then it will be difficult for uh, human rights to be enjoyed. Uh, there is no excuse whatsoever why people should uh, commit violence but uh, the state is the primary uh, protector uh, of all people who live in South Africa and therefore there should be uh, clear steps that say uh, as Africans uh, as w with values of good neighborliness how do we implement that how do we address the root causes of what we have uh, recently experienced it cannot be something that can be seen in isolation or can be addressed at the surface there is need uh, to go deeper and look at the broader challenges mm -hmm. for example as a Zimbabwe national I'm aware that there are serious challenges of political governance in that country which have resulted in millions of Zimbabweans coming to South Africa. So these are some of the challenges that need to be looked at to say how do we address that uh, in the spirit of Ubuntu, in the spirit of brotherliness, mm -hmm. in the spirit of solidarity, considering our history and our identity as one people. Mm -hmm. Deputy Minister, definitely, uh, when you're talking about the issue of citizenship and talking about uh, the issue of being an African, uh, we cannot leave out the issue of the philosophy of being Ubuntu, which is umdung umdung abantu, uh, you are because of other people. Uh, but seemingly, uh, the crack somewhere when it comes to understanding that philosophy or rather applying it what do you think we're going wrong with South Africans yeah I think what you are saying is very powerful mm -hmm. to say we, we, we are cracks because if you look at our Constitution is the world-renowned one highly respected because of the commitments that we make as a country if you look at our transitional justice um, uh, ru uh, legal instrument the promotion of National Unity and, Re and Reconciliation Act of mm -hmm. 1994. Again, <coughs> it talks to reconciliation, understanding, mm -hmm. not vengeance, and so on. So, but 
the reality is, you know, these things do not um, turn themselves into a lived, shared experience on a daily basis. Maybe we needed instruments to ensure that there is a citizenry buy-in mm -hmm, mm -hmm. uh, at, at a high level. I think we have done extremely well, as I've said. But I'm, I'm not sure what are we doing on a regular basis to ensure that there is a, a critical, critical, conscious building mm -hmm. or mechanism or mechanisms for citizens to understand. For instance, when you talk about the right to human dignity, yes. which is supreme in our constitution, mm -hmm. if we're having this in the townships and talking about it, maybe very few people would mm -hmm. really be able to relate to that. Mm -hmm. The culture of human rights. Maybe people... They will but, uh, just, just talking about that, uh, Deputy yeah. Minister, in, in terms of educating um, an average South African, immediate, one would have assumed that immediately after 1994, perhaps there would have been an exclusive program uh, from elementary level uh, to educate South Africans about the history, and not just uh, the history of South Africa, but uh, the SADC region uh, uh, throughout. Uh, why was there such a delay, perhaps, or why haven't we seen uh, much emphasis being put on the true translation of the, uh, of the history of Africa? I think, um, I don't know about other governments, but mm -hmm. I think South Africans, we have bits and pieces of what it will take to make this country work. As I've said, we have the best constitution, we have the peer review mechanism, yes. we have supported it and was actually spearheaded mm -hmm. by our own minister of um, public uh, service administration and also generally South Africa has been leading on these difficult issues mm -hmm. but I I'm not sure how we sustain this uh, this education for consciousness on a daily basis mm -hmm. and I think if you sit somewhere at a particular level uh, you, you are able to understand these issues but really below us right. there are challenges okay now let, mm. let's just quickly uh, hear from our viewers i believe that we've got a caller from namibia if i'm correct yes hello welcome to rights and recourse yes uh, good afternoon how are you sir? i'm well thank you how are you and i'm very fine yes i just want to contribute a bit about the xenophobic in south africa i'm also just calling you from the next door here Okay. Um, I yes. have uh, I have seen that uh, uh, this uh, the South African people, the fr starting from the leader, I think they have a big significant contribution, a negative one, to 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 to, to those violence. Let me tell you why. The violence that has been occurred in 2008, mm -hmm. they have been said. No, that will not happen again. That's only after five years. Then we experiencing dying people again. Your own fellow colleagues are from the same continent. What is like that is only the line, the borders. But we are brothers. Mm. And the, 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 the thing again of 2000, yesterday, the yesterday one, people are again killed. Yes. And that is truly, it is the information, the, the, lead, the lead that the Zulu king who is going out to tell the people to comment them and motivating them to go and kill mm. those who are fallen nationals it, it, it is true that it is the encouraging from the king to the right. it right. is the one who is encouraging those people to 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 the, those of the uh, excellent all right thank you so much d uh, i think we get the gist of his question basically and his contribution yes, he's yes. going over to uh the issue of leadership perhaps or as south africans that we were truly um in his sentiments that we are encouraging the issue of uh xenophobic attacks what do, what do we have to say about that adewa well i, I think uh, political leadership must be decisive when dealing with a serious matter like xenophobia. And in fact, um, what we needed to see mm -hmm. was uh, that reckless uh, statements uh, that appear to encourage xenophobia All right. should be condemned from the outset. All right. um, and uh, uh, 
quick action on the ground by the government yes. to address xenophobia and to acknowledge that it is a problem. But to, to say xenophobia does not exist, it's mere criminality, mm -hmm. would be to miss the point and therefore to miss the building blocks. All right, let's put it right there for now. Uh, remember that could, if you also want to be a part of our discussion right in studio, you can call us on 011-714-5497 or 5498 or tweet us directly. It's at rights and recourse or email us. It's rights and recourse at sabc.co.za. We'll be back shortly. Don't go anywhere. Gents, there are more than 22,000 voting stations in South Africa, but there's only one for you. That's the one where you registered, your local station. Vote local, cause local is lekker. Finish and clap. Zoom into Africa. This is Ethiopia. The Prime Minister is Mr. Hale Meriam Desalen. Ethiopia is Africa's oldest independent country. It was never colonized. The population is more than 80 million people. One of the major languages spoken is English. Monetary unit, Bir. Right, welcome back. Earlier on, we spoke uh, to uh, Ms. Nomfunda Mokhapi, who believes that uh, we can take a healing lessons from the truth and reconciliation process, rather. I think we're still going to speak uh, to Ms. Nomfunda Mokhapi, but we had a caller uh, from Namibia, basically, who was giving us his sentiments and who was saying that as South Africans, perhaps we motivate uh, these xenophobic attacks. I saw, Deputy Minister, that mm -hmm. you wanted to say something. Uh, can you perhaps uh, just breathe on that line? Yeah, uh, I, I really think we, we as leaders, we, I mean, when I say leaders, I don't mean political leaders yes. from all sorts of social formations. We have to be very careful mm -hmm. how to manage difficult issues like what happened recently. Yes. You know, when you talk xenophobic, it's, it's, a, it's a well established concept and phenomenon. You must look at the laws of the country mm -hmm. and see whether are there any policies and laws which reinforce these kinds of behaviors. Mm -hmm. And I think South Africa has been consistent mm -hmm. in terms of saying, let's appreciate the contribution of our brothers and sisters and that South Africa belongs to all who live in it mm -hmm. and the culture of human rights. Mm -hmm. So from that point of view, I don't think we should start blaming each other. Mm. We should find solutions and say, where, where are we going wrong mm. if there's that commitment in building the continent. Mm. I think South Africa has done far more in terms of ensuring that we don't we'll prevent it. develop in isolation, mm -hmm. but we work as a collective mm -hmm. within the continent. So, but the, the question is, where are we losing it? Where are we losing uh, yeah, it? that's All where right. we should focus. Dewa, I, I saw uh, you said earlier on that we need to address these issues. And yes. uh, in terms of us addressing, what particular issues uh, do you think that perhaps we need to start with? Uh, generally, there is a question of where the anger is coming from, where the frustration is coming from, uh, that we have this violence uh, outbreak in South Africa. So what do you think we should start? Well, the starting point is to make sure that the law takes its course and that those responsible for the violence mm -hmm. are held accountable. Yes. So if you look at 2008, the xenophobic attacks that left over 60 people dead, uh, mm -hmm. there has been uh, no thorough investigation and prosecution and conviction of those responsible. Mm -hmm. So that gives a sense of impunity that people can get away with, with murder, basically. So there is need for the government to uh, draw a line in the sand and say, xenophobic attacks will not be tolerated and show by action by holding those responsible accountable that they will not tolerate that so that is the starting point but mm -hmm. going forward the laws must then be marshaled together to ensure that uh, there are no attacks on foreign mm -hmm. nationals but not only that the government of south africa needs to take 
a leadership role in addressing the root causes of xenophobia. All right. uh, we have spoken about the rising unemployment in South Africa right. and the falsehoods or misconceptions about foreign nationals that okay. perhaps they are responsible for, for, for all the crime in South Africa okay. or for taking jobs or wives in South Africa. Right. Those things need to be put in perspective and in context in because context. it's all too easy to blame foreign nationals when without addressing the underlying issues. Okay. And Let's put it forward. right there. Let's put it right there right now for now. Uh, Dewa, and go to our Nell Spade studio where we're joined by Father Smagaliso. Uh, Father Smagaliso, thank you so much for joining us on Rights and Recourse and welcome. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to, to participate in your program. Yes. Uh, hopefully you've had our discussion and uh, some of the points uh, that we've touched on, especially on issues of trying to uh, motivate uh, the African Renaissance, the peace and reconciliation uh, uh, lifestyle in Africa. What do you have to say as one who is coming uh, from uh, the moral degeneration, rather, a moral regeneration movement? Regeneration. Well, yes, our take is that the way the people behave in terms of looting or violence, of killing, mm -hmm. uh, of uh, destruction and so forth, that is, we want to believe, is as a result of lack of certain values of human behavior. Mm -hmm. Those values which um, uh, are based on the spirit of Ubuntu. Yes. And we believe that unless people internalize those values, they tend to behave like almost like animals, like in a very irrational way. And therefore, they become easy prey to agitators, to people who may have their own negative and uh, irresponsible agendas and, and so on. Mm -hmm. But we believe that, first of all, it is totally criminal, totally wrong to take the lives of innocent people the way unfortunately it's been happening mm -hmm. over the past few weeks we also believe that the first thing that we all need to do as south africans is stop 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 the violence yes. immediately mm -hmm. and but linked to that linked to that we've got to make sure that we immediately embark on a massive program, mm -hmm. if you like, of a, a, a spiritual, cultural mm -hmm. um, reconstruction. In other words, how people from different uh, parts of the continent and other parts of the world should actually live together. Yes. We also uh, have uh, made the statement that we don't just need to look at what people have done in a very superficial way. We've asked We've got to ask ourselves fundamental questions. What are the underlying causes? What are the root causes of mm -hmm. the way these people uh, behave? Now, my co-panelists have said quite a bit about, uh, uh, I think they've addressed some of the, the, the aspects of the issue. But there's the one that I really feel needs to be addressed also. And yes. that is one of the need for leadership. Leadership right from the local level where the people live. Mm -hmm. uh, ask myself so the question when you say for leadership, what exactly are you referring to? Um, do you think that perhaps leadership is not doing enough in our country to curb this issue? Well, I would say leadership, obviously, first of all, in our own country. I asked myself the question when all these uh, violence was going on. Yes. Where were the local councillors? Where were the priests, the members of the clergy? Where was more M uh, MRM um, uh, uh, activists? Where were people who should be providing leadership at that level, including business as well, mm -hmm. including institutions of uh, uh, learning? Where were they? And I can go higher up at mm -hmm. the provincial level, national level. All right. All these different layers should have provided leadership. All right. Thank you so much, Afatas Mangali. So right now we're going to go to Cape Town and engage with our studio uh, right there, our studio guest that is Mr. Stanley Hankerman. Uh, Mr. Stanley, thank you so much for joining us on the show. Um, being one who's coming from the Justice and Reconciliation Program, um, what gospel are you preaching basically to South Africans at this time, difficult time, and in Africa in general? Thank you very much for giving us an opportunity to be part of this program. Essentially, what the Institute for Justice and Reconciliation proclaim is the fact that, number one, we are all human. Mm -hmm. that's, that's what every single person has in common. And secondly, we are all from this continent, from, from Africa, and so we are all Africans. Mm -hmm. and, and so uh, the, when you move from that premise, 
then you need to ask yourself, so why is it that uh, people in this country um, have difficulty in, in embracing this concept of um, inviting and also embracing our, our African brothers? Mm -hmm. And again, um, the previous speakers have indicated there's no easy answer to it. If yes. somebody knew the answer, we wouldn't have, have had this problem. Mm -hmm. But I think I'd like to, to fully agree with the previous speakers um, about leadership. And I, I concur with Father Smangli show that, that at local level, you need to ask, where are our counselors? Where are our community leaders? Because these are the people who are on the ground, who have contact with people within communities, and who actually have the ability to communicate with these people. Mm -hmm. But the other thing we need to say is that um, we're talking about a South Africa that comes from a brutal past. And yes, we, we are in a democracy. It's 21 years this year. Tomorrow we celebrate this wonderful occasion. But if you think about it, we haven't done much yes. about dealing with the deep wounds that sit within the fiber of our society. Mm -hmm. And so 1994 came with a promise of a better life. Mm -hmm. And so people, especially the poorest of the poor, mm -hmm. looked forward to a, to a future that looked different from yes. their past. All right. And the reality is that... When that you many speak, people when you don't experience us about that. Addressing issues. When you talk to us about uh, trying to address wounds of the past, what exactly are you referring to? What kind of uh, wounds would you, uh, especially uh, are these racial uh, wounds, are these African, perhaps uh, uh, citizenship wounds, what exactly are you referring to? I'm referring to the deep hurts that, that apartheid and colonialism inflicted on black people. And I use the word, word black chair in general yes. here. Um, they were non-citizens, um, or at best second-class citizens. Um, no rights were, were given to them. In fact, the whole uh, intention of apartheid and, and colonialism was to uh, teach black people that they cannot be on par with white, with white people. Right. And so you're talking about generational uh, woundedness that, that comes from that. And so many of us still deep down are not showing that we are equal to to other people all right and, and so that woundedness has not been addressed okay and all i right. i think that all right uh, when uh, thank we you so do much. this I think we just have to hold you right there for now i stand we're going to come back to you right there in cape town uh, but let me come to you, Deputy Minister. The issue of leadership keeps on uh, being questioned, uh, that perhaps you're not engaging enough leadership on this issue. And the issue of South Africa in general, that perhaps our democracy is still too young, or we've got issues that were assumed at the, the heads of the past that we haven't really dealt with. Uh, what do you have to say uh, with regards to that? Yeah, I will go back to what I said. Okay. We are dealing here with the dilemmas of democracy. You know, when you talk about leadership, there are questions around immigration. How mm -hmm. do we manage the process of flow of people within the continent? Yes. You go to Northern America, to Europe, it's a big issue all the time, but not so much here. And sometimes you ask yourself, we say we could protect people. There are people who are in the country whom nobody will identify and know where they are. Mm -hmm. And that's a huge risk, mm -hmm. which you don't find anywhere in the world, yeah. where you can walk in, you can go to a war zone, mm -hmm. and then people will think you are there, you are, you, you, you are treated badly mm -hmm. because you are not a South African. Mm -hmm. And yet you are just at the hotspot of violence. So that's why I'm saying let's be a little bit careful. I know it's very difficult to talk about this mm -hmm. when lives have been lost. Yes. And in our context, that's something big because... Even when we went through the Truth and Reconciliation Commission, one thing which was said clearly that never again should any person on this ground mm -hmm. go through what we went through before. And mm -hmm. it has happened. It's mm -hmm. a difficult thing and it's painful for all of us. Mm -hmm. So we, we have to look at this at all levels, as most speakers have said. The question of controlling entry to the country is equally difficult because mm -hmm. you don't want the kind of South Africa which has stringent rules yes. and people can enter the mm -hmm. country. 
And at the same time, once they are here, you don't know how to protect them if you don't know where they are. That's why I said, let's approach it really with a sober mind right. and find solution across the continent. Mm -hmm. Not saying we look at South Africa and say, South Africa, when it comes to the rule of law, we have the courts which are independent. We yes. have had our own horror stories mm -hmm. of death. And we don't have death penalty in this mm -hmm. country. It's mm -hmm. not allowed. In other countries, you touch a button, you are dead. Mm -hmm. So there are quite a number of things that we must look at very carefully. But one thing, we have been consistent. That never, never again should mm -hmm. any South African ill treat another uh, based uh, on Mm -hmm. being from Zimbabwe or Mozambique or anything. All it right. will be against everything we stand for. Okay, well, let's take uh, a caller from Cape Town. We've got Papi who's calling us from Cape Town right now. Hello, Papi. Welcome to the show. Hello, Papi. Hello, sir. You're welcome. Yes, um, Thank you welcome for to the show. Hello. Yes, we can hear you, Papi. Okay, thank you for giving me this opportunity. Yes. Okay, I uh, was listening to the man, I'm, I'm from DRC, from Congo DRC. Okay. okay. I was listening to the man from the the human rights. Yes. Okay, what I, what I wanted to say about my contribution, last uh, one month, I was listening to him. It was on a 315. Mm -hmm. He was there with another man from a uh, business society from um, from a job base. Yes. Okay. What the men say, what the men right now say is true. Because the one was there about the business society from a uh, job base people, he said, we foreigners, our problem is we don't know to approach the local people. Mm -hmm. That's why the local they don't want foreigners in the township. What kind of approach, but, Papi, do you think foreign nationals should have to locals? Hello, sir. Please what kind of approach again. would you like to see as a foreign national? What kind of relationship do you think foreign nationals should be having with locals? But we, 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 have, we have good relation, good relationship with uh, foreigners. Mm -hmm. In the market, where we are working, we, we, we live with them as our brother. All right. Then the, the way they are, they, they welcome us in South Africa. All right. But All right. The problem, some, some local, inside, inside their mind, they don't, they don't approach us, they don't, they don't receive us as their brother. Okay. Thank you so much, Papi. Uh, because of time, unfortunately, uh, we have to cut you right there. But right now, uh, we have to go for another break. Uh, you can call us right in studio and also be a part of our discussion. The number is 0117145497 and 5498. And tweet us directly. It's at Rights and Recourse or email us directly right in studio. It's at Rights and Recourse at sabc.co.za. We'll be back shortly. Don't go anywhere. That goal was outstanding. Made so much dust that I couldn't see and I hit a stone and we had a puncture. Catch all these and more every day on Sports Live at 8.30 p.m. on the SABC News Channel.
All right, welcome back. You're still watching Rights and Recourse right here on SABC News Channel 404. I'm Sipi I'm standing in for Jumila Mateza. We're discussing issues of being an African and issues of moral regeneration. And joining me right here in studio, I've got Dawa and Deputy Minister. And early on, we had a gentleman who was calling us who's from Cape Town. He says he's a foreigner also. But then the issue of a relationship that uh, foreigners, perhaps uh, foreign nationals, should be having with locals, there seems to be a bit of a brink there. Uh, what do you think we're going wrong, uh, Dewa? Well, I, I think that's uh, very correct. And if you look at, uh, if you try and profile where this xenophobic violence is happening, it's in the townships in where um, uh, poor communities and uh, foreign nationals are coming in. Yes. So th that is where government needs to see how to address the needs and issues of those communities. Yeah. Uh, because if you look at uh, even those that are now standing out and prominently speaking out against xenophobia, mm -hmm. uh, these are uh, middle class and those that uh, have teacher education and other things. So so there is need to look at the grassroots, to look mm -hmm. at the communities, uh, the townships, the local leadership, uh, to have them empowered uh, to understand the root causes and the challenges around yes. xenophobic violence. The police as an institution to be properly equipped to address these issues. Mm -hmm. uh, but also, as the minister has said, issues of immigration to South Africa. South Africa is viewed rightly so as an economic and political powerhouse in the region. Mm -hmm. uh, so one way of addressing these issues would be for South Africa to have a stronger position of spreading democracy in the region so that South Africa ceases to be an isolation, an yes. island in itself because everyone would then be flowing to where there is freedom mm -hmm. and democratic space. Mm -hmm. So for example with Zimbabwe, the government of South Africa should not have been tolerating the Mugabe regime uh, in a way that has sent millions of Zimbabweans flocking to South Africa yes. and putting pressure on South Africa's meager resources. If you look at unemployment in South Africa, it's rising and yet immigration is also rising. Um, so okay. there is need to address some of the problems in the countries where mm -hmm. they are originating mm -hmm. from in order to address immigration and to stop the flaws mm -hmm. of people who are coming uh, to South Africa so that at least we, we have uh, broad development in the Sadek region in Africa as a whole, so that it's not just the island of South Africa that is developed, that has got uh, world standards, and the, where everyone right. is flocking to. All right, let's take a caller. We've got a caller who's calling us from Cape Town. Hello, welcome to Rights and Recourse. Hello, caller. All right, it seems like we've lost that caller. But let me come to you, Deputy Minister. Um, with what's been said, seems like everybody uh, keep, they keep on bringing the issue of leadership not being involved and i know that you spoke broadly about um partnership that we're all responsible for bringing forth the message of uh, being an african uh, but as government perhaps or oh, let me rather go back to the issue of truth and reconciliation commission uh, when it was instituted at the dawn of democracy one would have assumed that south africans perhaps would be more uh, reconciliatory you know they'll be more uh, tolerant towards other african brothers but it seems like the message has been broken uh, somewhere well the truth and reconciliation commission was very very important mm -hmm. at the at the time when we're <coughs> dealing with our own transitions from apartheid to democracy but of course um if you look at where we are today you start saying how often do we make reference to the recommendations of the truth and reconciliation yes. commission in such a way that whatever was recommended is a daily discourse mm. because that's where maybe problems are that there will be a good piece of legislation mm -hmm. or of policy but if there's no if if we're not implementing and making special reference to it there might be difficulties especially for younger generations mm -hmm. they might not embrace those values mm -hmm. the truth and reconciliation commission incidentally was not only a South African phenomenon. Mm -hmm. We went to Rwanda. We shared our experiences an and, African we, initiative. and we worked together. Mm. We went to Nigeria and a few other Afri uh, African countries because okay. the whole idea was that we have to embrace specific values, the rule of law, peace, and reconciliation. All right. All right. Well, let's go back to that caller from Cape Town. I believe that is back on the line. Hello. Hello. Welcome to Rights and Recourse. All right, let's go back. Um, it seems like we've lost that caller. Now we're going to go uh, to our Cape Town, or rather, uh, now Spade Studios, and go to Father Smangaliso. Uh, Father Smangaliso, welcome back on our discussion. Uh, the issue of um, morals, basically, you said earlier on that it seems like people 
have got, uh, the president also last week, he said this, that people have got an issue of violence sink as South Africans. We respond before reasoning. Uh, do you think that perhaps there needs to be a regrouping in terms of our psychological pattern or understanding of being African? A friend of mine by the name of Benny Kwapa, long before we achieve our freedom, yes. he made a very interesting statement which was, sounded like a joke. He said, after our freedom, we need to employ hundreds of psychologists and, and so on in order to deal with the mind that has been damaged by uh, uh, apartheid. And I think in many ways this is really becoming true. There's mm. sort of forms of anger that we experience, the, 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 the violence that we experience, uh, lack of tolerance. Mm. Now, I therefore feel that one of the things that we need to do immediately is, for example, to make sure that in our schools, in our universities, that we emphasize the importance of the spirit of Ubuntu in very practical terms, not just as a philosophy and, and so on. So that when our young people grow up, they are, their behavior is guided by certain very specific values. Now, having said so, though, I think we cannot run away from the fact that we are also living in a highly materialistic world mm -hmm. where the worth of a person is judged much more in terms of what they, what have, they have, what they look like, instead of the quality and of the, the content of their, their character. And right. that therefore manifests itself in excessive greed, and which mm -hmm. leads to violent, uh, violence and misunderstandings. All right. What do you think we can relish uh, from the Truth and Reconciliation Commission, though, uh, to help us get to where we want to be today? Sorry, come again? What do you think we can relish from the Truth and Reconciliation Commission to help us in terms of that moral regeneration you're talking about, to help us get to where we want to be as South Africans? What do you think? Yes. yes. The Truth and Reconciliation Commission was a wonderful uh, initiative by the people of South Africa, mm -hmm. which has since benefited lots of other uh, people, even in different parts of the world. I therefore feel that very strongly that we also need to understand that truth and reconciliation was not just a very sweet uh, exercise of being nice to one another, forgetting what had happened in the past. It emphasized the need for creating an environment where there could be reconstruction, there could be a, a reconciliation in practical terms, where there could be the development of the people because yes. for me, is the spirit of Ubuntu is not just a disembodied uh, a, a theory. It must address the issues of the, what is in the best interest of the people, the common good, making sure that people have the basic necessities of life, but also creating an environment where people themselves can take initiative, mm -hmm. not only just to rely solely on government. All right. Uh, thank you so much, Father Smagali. So now let's go to Cape Town and engage with Stanley right there. Stanley, the issue of anger, South Africans have got an anger or violence sink. Uh, do you agree with these sentiments? I do agree. I think South Africans are, are generally uh, angry and this anger you see in all um, facets of our society um, even those who have benefited from the past mm -hmm. are, are angry today. And, and so, uh, it, so the pervasive anger is, is a serious uh, problem in terms of us having conversations that matter with each other. And the problem that we, we do see also is that uh, un unless we start having honest conversations with each other, unless we start the process of talking about our pain, the one thing that the TRC mm -hmm. achieved was to give people an opportunity to, to talk about the pain, to talk about the loss, to talk about the, the, chapter of, the chapters of their lives that have been unclosed. And, and uh, that we've seen on our television screens and, and, and it was compelling and you could see what it meant to people. We have not done that with the rest of our society. Mm. And I, I fully agree that we need to, to find a way to engage our communities um, at a very local level, um, starting with our students, our learners at school. 
right. and the Institute for Justice and Reconciliation is part of a, a UNESCO project mm -hmm. where we are working with the values in education uh, um, component and, and teaching something to teachers and, and education officials called teaching right. respect for all. And okay. that is where we look at what's happening in the classroom, okay. where's the intolerance, where's the discrimination, and deal with it on that level through education. All right, Stanley, we're going to come back to you right then, Cape Town. But right now, uh, let's take another caller. Um, it's Mark who's calling us from Cape Town, I believe. Welcome, Mark, to Rights and Recourse. Yes, yes, good day. Uh, what I want... Yes, what I wanted to contribute to the program is, I, th I think uh, uh, South Africa, we, we need to, to start from the grassroots. Mm -hmm. I'm also a, a foreigner from Zimbabwe. Yes. I've been here for more than 10 years now. Mm -hmm. But wh wh what I've seen, which needs to be addressed, is one, people must also, as a South African, there must be a, 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 a program where people must also know that the government can provide every small mm -hmm. thing for you. So that at least uh, this will make the South Africans also not to be reliant on the government. The government is just a mother body. It can't uh, really go on all those small things. Now, when, when, when people don't get educated that the government can provide every single detail, when these foreigners come, mm -hmm. they will be victims because sometimes they don't get those things from the government, but they look for those things for themselves. Mm. That's number one. All right. Then the violent culture with South Africans, uh, not all of them, but just that small group, needs to be rooted out. If you check it, not in isolation. Okay. When we have said this delivery in South Africans, you see in the major roads, they block okay. the roads. Mark, uh, because of time. People Mark? pass by, they get affected. Mark, thank you so and much. Because of time, unfortunately, we have to cut you, but we do get this gist uh, of your contribution, basically, to the show. If you'd also like to join us right in studio, it's all double one seven one four five uh, seven one four five four nine seven and 5498. It's rights and records. We'll be back shortly after this. Welcome back. You're still watching Rights and Recourse right here on SABC News Channel 404. Uh, we're taking your calls. So right now we're going to take Siriman who's calling us from Zimbabwe. Hello, Siriman. Hello, Siriman. Welcome to the show. Good, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Please get straight to the yeah. point. Just make it brief. Yeah, uh, your yeah. contribution to our, our discussion today. Hello. Yes, yeah, Siriman, we can hear you. Get straight to the point. Yes, uh, good afternoon. Mm. Ran. Yes. Right. We appreciate the discussions happening now. Yes, sir. And uh, one would appreciate that as Africa, we need to deal with those issues. Mm -hmm. But being people who have fought in the pits with um, condolences and everything, we think this thing can be sorted out not from a public domain. And there's also no need to probably blame government. Because as we look at it, Chinese and the other white people are not being attacked. Okay, so, uh, so sir, look at the root. sir, man, what exactly do you think you think we should look at? We should uh, look at the educating the people, particularly the history aspect of the South African education All right. system. If people are taught about the revolution, where it started, we mm -hmm. shared the camps with all these comrades. And if people know that, 
All right. Then we can be able to deal with it, inculcate it, and come up with something. All right. Thank you so much, Sirman. Uh, that's Sirman who's calling us from Zimbabwe. Deputy Minister, Ali on, who had a caller, or rather, Father Smagaliso, uh, who said that the issue of decol we still need to be decolonized mentally as Africans. Um, the issue of being divided by not just the issue uh, by, by just uh, race barriers, by also just geographics, uh, that if you're coming from Limpopo, perhaps if you're coming from Nigeria, you're different from those coming from South Africa. And now this caller uh, says that we need to deal with this as Africans. It's all in the mind. We still need to go back to the issues of the past. Yeah, well, post-conflict, mm. people tend to live with pain, memories for, for too long, mm -hmm. depending on where they are. But in the context of what has happened in the country, it's important to be unambiguous in terms of saying it's against everything we stand for as Africans. But the point I wanted to raise is that for me, it's like we have to go back to the basics, have programs and projects that bring us together. Because the issues we are dealing with are really not academic issues just to talk about and leave it there. We have to, you know, like African Renaissance mm -hmm. conferences, Pan-African Women Organization, all the things that cemented our relationships that are real that dealt with the most difficult issues. Mm -hmm. If you take South Africa, for instance, if we had even economic projects, yes. which will bring us together, and people realize that there are skills that we don't have, but we cannot allow the domination of mm -hmm. those who are privileged by the apartheid, yes. because we have our own Africans mm -hmm. who are trained in engineering, all these critical skills that we don't have. Right. People will begin to think differently, because we'll be dealing with real life issues. Mm -hmm. When it comes to these low level skills, I think that's where the challenge that's is. That's where the challenge is. But again, they, of course we have to provide leadership mm -hmm. in terms of what we are doing with small medium entities, the cooperatives, and help our people at a local mm -hmm. level to open the markets. Yes. There are goods that could be produced for Zimbabwe, for Mozambique, for the continent mm -hmm. as a whole. Yes. But the main message is that there are things we have to do mm -hmm. together <clears> and <throat> strengthen the African bond. All right. Because without that, we are nothing. You go to multilateral organization, mm -hmm. you go as an African. Yes. And our people who are stuck in poverty might not understand that. So there are things, deliberate interventions, which we must take so that they begin to realize that. Mm -hmm. They were not there yesterday. They were not in the camps. All, right. all over the world. They were not in the trenches. Some, they are born after 1994. All right. Another issue, though, is an issue of our constitution as South Africa, uh, a constitution that is... Uh, lenient uh, towards even foreign nationals. Uh, we get clauses that say uh, South Africa belongs to all who live in it. And perhaps uh, the, 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 there is a breakdown of communication in terms of that understanding. Um, does that mean that in terms of citizenship that all have equal rights, uh, foreign nationals perhaps have equal rights as South Africans? I think that's where uh, some people question it. Uh, but I think maybe we just need to clarify that because early on the caller did touch on that, uh, the caller we had from Cape Town. I think there are fundamentals yes. which we all have to accept that as long as the person is in South Africa, is protected. Yes. For instance, the question of human dignity. There is no way in which our forefathers, going back to Albert Lituli, Tato Mandela, and so on, will agree if you treat any person in a way which doesn't mm -hmm. restore that person's dignity, irrespective of where they come from. Mm -hmm. Equality. Again, it's something which is fundamental. Mm -hmm. Once you, even if you are a leader, once you step that line, you'll be against everything mm -hmm. that defines South Africa, the culture of human rights mm -hmm. and the rule of law. So, of course, my brother here said mm -hmm. we shouldn't promote impunity. impunity. That's the struggle that we are in, All that right. people should be held accountable mm. if they have committed crimes All in right. this country. Well, perhaps let's take another ad break, and when we're coming back from the break, we'll engage with our guests who are in Cape Town and the one who's joining us from now straight and just try to put together the particles of our discussion. Our line is 011 714 5497 and 5498. We'll be back shortly.
yeah, that goal was outstanding. Made so much dust that I couldn't see and I hit a stone and we had a puncture. Catch all these and more every day on Sports Live at 8.30 p.m. on the SABC News Channel. Right, so welcome back. We're still watching Rights and Recourse right here on SABC 404. Uh, now, we're going to put together some particles. Let me just go to Cape Town, rather, uh, to Stanley Hankeman, who's joining us from Cape Town Studios. Uh, Stanley, just putting together our discussion, uh, your final closing remarks. Moving forward as South Africans, where do you think we should go? I think the one, the one important thing that we need to continue to do is to talk. Um, dialogue is critically important mm. and I would suggest that we look at um, constituting platforms at a very local level where different entities including foreign nationals form part of dialogues where we can deal with issues and challenges as they arise. We should help South Africans to talk through the challenges talk through rather the than challenges. responding. All right, all right. Thank you so much. That is Stanley Hankeman, uh, was joining us on Kaipsan Studios. Right now, let's go to uh, Nels Sprite and speak to Father Smagalis. So, Father Smagalis, your closing remarks on our discussion, please. Just briefly. Yes, uh, sorry, come again. The line is not very clear. All right. Uh, your closing remarks on our discussion, please. Just briefly. One, what we need to do is to challenge also the AU to ensure that it also speeds up development uh, and fighting poverty in their own countries as a whole. Because to some extent, that, I mean, poverty and unemployment contributes to so many of their people okay. coming into our country, and that creates problems. All right. And finally, also just to point out that I think for me it's important that we should know who is in the country, where they come from, what they are doing, and the, uh, you know, how they are keeping themselves employed. All right. Because Thank that you. Thank you so much, Father Swanaliso. Thank you so much because of time. Now we'll have to come to our Jobic Studios. Uh, sure. Deputy President, you, uh, Deputy Minister, rather, your closing remarks on our discussion. I think when um, people come from other African countries, yes. we have to assist them to understand the history of this country. Because sometimes if they are coming from countries where they have suffered from their own black governments, they might not trust the government and they might make utterances mm -hmm. that will predispose them to risk of being uh, not trusted by yes. their locals. But also, I strongly believe that there are things that we can do to together mm -hmm. immediately, so as to reinforce trust and believe in and each believe other in and other. Mm. realizing that we need each other. Even South Africans, they need other brothers and sisters from the continent mm -hmm. to transform this country to realize radical economic transformation that everybody's yearning for in this country. Okay. Dale, let's come to you. Uh, thank you. The starting point is a stronger law enforcement to make it clear that people should not take the law into their own hands and to hold accountable those responsible and then ensure that you address the root causes of xenophobia, mm -hmm. including the economic issues, including unemployment issues, and also to correct the falsehoods uh, that are perpetuated uh, across the board mm -hmm. that foreign nationals are responsible for all the evils right. in South Africa. All right. Thank you so much for joining us now our discussion today right well, here thanks. on Rights and Recourse. And let me also thank my guests from Cape Town and now straight Well, thank you so much also to you for joining us right at home. This has been Rights and Recourse. The program uh, will be repeating at 10 tonight and 5 on Monday morning. From all of us right in the studio, thank you so much. Till next time, goodbye. This is Primetime News. Scores have been evicted after their properties were sold without their knowledge. We take an in-depth look at top stories of the day. Live crossings to our journalists on the scene. Studio analysis. And a special focus on regional stories.
This is Primetime News, weekdays at 6.30 p.m. and weekends at 6 p.m. on the SABC News Channel. Now exactly 1500 hours Central African time. A good afternoon and welcome to this your Sunday edition of PM News live from Johannesburg with me, Gabriel Kofu. These are the stories making the headlines this hour. The death toll in Nepal has now risen to more than 2,200. Thousands more have been injured after an earthquake devastated the Kathmandu Valley. Police in the Burundian capital, Bujumbura, used water cannons and tear gas to disperse protesters demonstrating against President Pierre Kurunziza seeking a third term. And coming up in your sports, uh, Pretoria and Cape Town continue to battle in the NetBank semi-final as Mamelodi Sundowns host Vasco da Gama. That game just about to start. And in our top story now this hour, the death toll in Nepal has now uh, risen to more than 2,200. Thousands more have been injured after the quake devastated the Kathmandu Valley. And in the meantime, some international aid is now starting to arrive in Nepal. The first rescue plane carrying the injured arrived in Kathmandu on Sunday, shortly before a strong aftershock. The survivors flown down from Everest included three from China, Japan and South Korea. People vacated offices and residential buildings and ran out in Lucknow city in northern Uttar Pradesh state. It was like yesterday, though we will not be able to tell its magnitude, but it was very strong. As we read in the newspapers today that for two or three days such jolts will be felt and people need to be cautioned. Tourism ministry officials estimated that at least 1,000 climbers, including about 400 foreigners, had been at base camp or on the ascent to the peak when Saturday's earthquake struck. Relief agencies said hospitals in the Kathmandu Valley were overflowing and running out of medical supplies. Meanwhile, many aid organizations and donor countries are participating in relief operations. Germany's leading NGO, International Search and Rescue, is one of the groups involved in the rescue operations. ISAR specializes in civil protection and fire and rescue services and the provision of rescue dogs and advanced tracking technology to locate people. How do I hear from the media? various other reports at the United Nations is that there seems to be a very high number of casualties and people still trapped under the rubber. There will be a lot of work for us to do to help everyone. The latest earthquake aftershock struck India and Nepal, shaking buildings and triggering an avalanche in the Himalayas. The United States Geological Survey said the tremor was 6.7 magnitude. 